there. Slowly but surely, there we go. We are all set. Good morning, everyone. It is Fantabulous Friday. How exciting. Carol Sue, aka Nani Boss, live with two sisters. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0 still operating from the different locale you know the beauty of what we do <laughs> is that we can pivot on a dime and I think, I think we do pivot on a dime and I think you have to look at adversity as a way to celebrate to do something different so you know we go with the flow and of course it is fantabulous Friday and um obviously before we sign off for the day we will then announce uh the winner of the two sisters Stu not award. Absolutely. Got to get that in there. Um, and, you know, really, it's it's really embracing that a lot of times, you know, we are, I think we all can attest that we do kind of say dumb things or put our foot in our mouths or regret what we said. Say, Ooh, why did I do that? I mean, I come on, be real. Be real with yourself. We all know you, you've done it. We've done it. Everyone does it. Um, but the piece that add to the flair of why we announce an award and make recommendations make recommendations is you know there's one thing when you're embracing something that impacts your health and your wellness and sometimes people say ridiculous things that you know it incites you and infuriates you it may add stress you may just like oh my goodness and sometimes you dwell on it so we don't want you dwelling on when someone and or yourself sticks your foot in your mouth or says something that would, uh, you know, be worthy of this do not award. It really is just address that we, you know, we all we all do dumb things at time to time. But the key piece is if you can make fun of yourself and or recognize that maybe hmm, kind of a dumb thing to say, like I didn't really put a lot of thought into it. How many times? How many times have you said something and really didn't think about what you're going to say? Didn't put thought into it. Did not understand or think about how it may impact someone else. And so that's the importance of this do not award. It's kind of a funny flair of making fun of ourselves or making fun of um, public figures. And when I say public figures, I'm not specifically talking about politicians. I mean, anyone, a public figure, um, because a lot of times that's what you see on social media when you're doing that scroll. But let's get back to Fantabulous Friday. It is such a fun day, number one, a lot of people get excited tgif that doesn't that doesn't end even for an entrepreneur tgif does not end and you know it's a, it's a it's a day that you celebrate and we are celebrating you and we're celebrating each other on the different accomplishments and, and or goals that maybe we set for this week because we know uh, there's ways of doing goals right there you got your your short-term goals you may have your quarterly goals, yearly goals, monthly goals. There's all sorts of goals, but the bigger goals need stepping stones to get there. You know, uh, that you know, so many times we talk about the people that oh, just you know, life goes so perfect for them. They they get to that direction real quick. Oh my God, they're you know. But you celebrate. We want to celebrate each other, the big wins, of course. But we want to celebrate the small wins. They get they get short change. I often think of small stepping stones being short change like thanksgiving <laughs> yeah i really think that's true because when you look at the grand scheme of celebrate celebrating those little things or milestones and as you said you may look at someone and say oh my god they have it all together well what we have not seen from that person that we perceive to have it all together and quite likely they very well do there was a lot of hard work on that there was a lot of stepping stones and I bet you, you know, I could say <laughs> with 100% certainty that each one of those peoples has fallen several times. But the point is they got up and they learned from their experience and that they kind of look at it as um, a broadened view of, okay, I thought I was going this direction. This happened, but it's now leading me this way. Well, what what is the lesson to learn in that? That's a stepping stone. That's another foundation piece to get to where we want to be. <laughs> and it can be very different, of course, for everyone. And, you know, we've stumbled, we've fallen. Um, you know, it's been almost a year, for instance, since I moved my office downstairs. And 
as I was doing show notes last night, I thought to myself, well, isn't this funny? I'm kind of back in the same place. And I have a lot of fond memories of this place. And, you know, it, it gets those creative juices flowing. Okay. Well, you know, I am not one of those people sometimes that does well with change. I freely admit that. But it's a learning experience to see where I was to where where I am now <clears throat> and where I potentially may go. And I think we have to afford ourselves that opportunity to really look at each one of those little stepping stones. Right. And, 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 and celebrate these small wins because we need to validate the journey. And the only way you validate the entire journey is to recognize those small pieces that led you to the bigger piece that leads you to the bigger goal that gets you eventually to uh, getting to that, whatever you were striving for. And during that whole transformation of getting there, it's also a roadmap for the next goal. And that's why the importance of celebrating yourself, celebrating your wins, finding those blessings. You know, so many times, oh, we, we look at the half, the glass half full, uh, or half empty, you know, depending on, you know, the wording, how you like, like to, to, you know, resonate towards that, that phrase. We are, we never get to the end game of anything. We're always a work in progress, but along those progresses are little pieces that really Maybe you didn't value, maybe you didn't even recognize, and it may be until after you've reached the goal that you say, oh my gosh, like, why didn't I think about how good I did this thing? Or I had to renegotiate because my schedule wouldn't allow it. Maybe, you know, you had a derailment. I mean, we all have derailments. And, and anyone that says the, the road, uh, you know, of success, you know, comes easy, it does not. And, and what does your road for success look like? There are going to be pivots. There's going to be uh, bumps in the road. There's going to be forks in the road. And these are all things that we have to negotiate and navigate. And when you do, even though it may at that particular time, like, well, that was kind of a no-brainer. Of course, I'm going to choose this way. For many, it's not a no-brainer. For many, they have to discern over it. For many of them, it's a struggle. Like, which way do I go? I was supposed to go this way. This is the way I, I, I thought I was going. This is the way, you know, my passion was going. This was the way that everything I mapped out led me. But now all of a sudden I got this fork and now this fork is giving me more options. Maybe this fork is leading me into a whole other direction that I had no idea even existed within my being. So I think that's, that's the cool piece about really celebrating those small wins. And when I say small wins, I mean small wins. For some, you know, if you are suffering from, say, uh, mental illness, or you're suffering from, you know, be, you know, an addiction, whether it's drinking, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, whether it's food, whether it's, um, there's a whole gamut of things that that piece could be. And so many times people that have these addictions need support systems along the way. So maybe your win today was, you had decided to go to a meeting that you had no intention of going to. That's a win. That's a stepping stone. Um, maybe you've been kind of stuck in your own way. You know, that's another phrase that you hear a lot of people saying, well, what does that mean, stuck in your way? You're your, you're your own worst enemy. You're, you're what's blocking you from going forward. So maybe you suffer from depression and you just, today was the day you decided, you know what? I'm going to get up and make my bed. That's a stepping stone in the right direction. So when we talk about small, for some, it may be as simple for some, but is more difficult for others, making the bet. Don't you think, Jan? I mean, I think, I think we overlook so many blessings of decision-making that we do for ourselves, pointing us in the right direction, giving us maybe that first step, just picking up the foot and going forward. And we really don't celebrate those. And that's what, for us, that's what Fantabulous Friday is all about. It certainly is, you know, it's, you know, the actual act of putting one foot in front of the other. And that's, you know, that can be a mindset perception, right? Yeah, I mean, you physically don't have to be doing that. It's the act of, like you said, getting up, making your bed, 
I couldn't make mine yet because the monster's still in it, lazy bum. But here's the thing. It, you know, how many times have we had those conversations within our own mind? You know, I forget how many thoughts they said the average person has a day. <laughs> what if oh, we- it's thousands. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see if I can look that up. Go ahead. You keep going. Let's see if I can look yeah, that, that up. That'd be cool to find that out. So how many thoughts have you had a day that, oh my God, I, you know, this is this project I'm working on uh, is turning all crappy, but yet when you get to a certain point of working on this important project, you realize, wait a minute, you see the beauty of, or maybe you're, you, you're starting to see the results of the hard work you put that you're putting into that. And that's called momentum. <laughs> so that should be celebrated. We don't give ourselves enough credit. And well, well, you're going to be mind blown by this stat. So according to the National Science Foundation, an average person has about 12,000 to 60,000 per day. But, but here's the big but, and this is, could not come at a better time because it's Fantabulous Friday and we're going to flip it around. Of those, 80% are negative. Mm. I, I'm mind blown by that. And 95% are repetitive thoughts. So let's think about that. I'm going to read that one more time so it really resonates with people. According to the National Science Foundation, the average person has 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. But of those, 80% are negative thoughts, 95% are repetitive thoughts. Now think about that. Think about that on Fantabulous Friday where we're telling you to celebrate you. We're giving you an avenue to change that 80% and say, you know what? I'm not gonna feel negative that I didn't accomplish everything that was on my little checkbox list for the week. I'm gonna focus on the positive things that happened to me. Maybe I made good decisions. Maybe I made better decisions. Maybe I made a decision that push, pushes me forward. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about mindset impacts our health and our wellness. Now, let's be real. That high percentage of 80% of negative, what do you think negative thoughts do? They wow. add stress to your life, don't you think, Jan? Yeah. What else can you think? I, the number one thing I think of is stress, um, not feeling well, what, 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 when you hear that, that 80% of negative thoughts, well, how do you think that negatively impacts your life? Well, I think of stress as the umbrella, okay? What's underneath that umbrella? Our, our, um, our nervous system, our, the parasympathetic system, all that stuff starts to go haywire, which increases inflammation in the body, which is a physiological response, which creates maybe headaches for someone. Um, stomach aches. Stomach aches. You know, <laughs> it's all, it's all in the gut. You know, the gut is the second brain. So it's, it's not that, okay, I, I feel a little stress. Stress is a big umbrella. And I think it's important to recognize, okay, I'm feeling stress about this that happened but how can I turn that around? I, I was feeling stress. You know, I've talked about it several times this week, the fro frozen pipes. Um, right. But <laughs> shite happens. And you know what? Um, I caught it within an hour and a half. It could have been a lot worse. So Correct. then, and when I, when I realized what was happening, I'm not going to lie. I was freaking out because I was the only one here. But you know what? It all worked out. You get, Sometimes you have to, kind of step away it, if it's something as simple as walking out of the room you know step away maybe listen to some music maybe take some deep breaths deep breaths are a really good way to kind of <clears throat> excuse me calm your nerves and bring you to a place where you can make a more logical decision if you need to make a decision or a choice about what you're going to do but give yourself um, the due process of recognizing that because stress wreaks havoc. We know that. Yeah. And in addition to the, these studies that came out with these percentages, they're saying that these studies reveal that the quality of our existence rests on the quality of our internal 
in external communication. So think about that. You have that internal communication with the, within yourself, but it's also uh, being infiltrated by the news, the media, you know, social media, your, your apparatuses, your devices, right? And you internalize that. And when you internalize that, you start repeating it over and over and over again because it's repeating in your brain and it eventually spews out into your external being and how now we can really get a really good idea, a better idea about just how much our thoughts impact our health and our wellness and the importance of really changing that up in such a way. And it's not going to happen overnight. We know that, you know, you know, we, we, Definitely know that because we experience that ourselves. We're all, you know, we we all do the same thing. And it's trying to break that cycle. And remember that there is a lot of good that we do. That, yeah, while we may have had crazy busy weeks and didn't check off every single box, there are there are things that you might have checked off that are not actually in your checkoff list. You know, you may have had to uh, renegotiate on a dime and it wasn't even on your list. So that's why we always say celebrate, really look back from Monday through Friday or Sunday, actually Sunday through Friday and say, what did I, you know, look at your list. And we always, we're, we're big list people, you know, whether you do it on sticky notes, whether it's on your calendar, your planner, whatever, uh, our minds and our bodies are a fine, fine machine. And we don't, we don't even, we don't even tap into uh, all of what we are. So when you have this, so think of it this way. How does a corporation run? We'll, we'll use a corporation as an example. I don't want to use the government because that's a circus show right now. So let's look at a corporation right now. A corporation doesn't run on its own, right? They have, you know, a CEO, a CFO, you know, all these different compartments. And within those compartments, right, there's department heads. And within those department heads, there may be assistants. Uh, supporting systems, supporting roles. So a corporation doesn't run on its own. Well, think of your body. We already talked about it, that it's a fine machine. Think of it now as a corporation. And how are you meeting the minds of all the different systems within your body that really can uh, be organized, right? So, so we know that a corporation can't run with all, all these supporting pieces. So the supporting pieces for us are your planner, on your calendar, you know, your, your notes on your phone, uh, you know, anything that you want to write down. Because our mind, we're not, you like we're going in a thousand places and we're still not even using, I don't know what the percentage is, but we're only using a small percentage of our brain. So when you think about that, we need a supporting cast, which is those things that we talked about, the physical things to keep us on track. But because we are so uniquely individual, uniquely divine in our own light, in our own way, the way that we are created, sometimes you may have something on your list that's not in there, maybe in your internal piece. Mm -hmm. And you have to make that decision. And if it's a great decision, even though it had to be a small little piece of your journey for the week, celebrate it. Pat yourself on the back and say, you know what, I did a good job. I think we don't give ourselves enough credit, enough recognition. I don't think we talk to ourselves enough in the mirror and have that conversation, a real conversation, say, you know what? As bad as I really kind of thought my week was going, now when I really sat down in the quiet of my brain and at my desk or whatever my, my, my calm place is, and we always encourage everyone within your domain, within your home, within your yard, find that little calming place that's for you, that you can sit and do some reflection, do some self-meditating, self-worth. We And a lot of people don't, it's a kind of an uncomfortable subject to talk about because a lot of people think it's selfish. It is not selfish to nourish oneself and give ourselves a pat on the back. It's not selfish. That's absolutely correct. And, you know, we deserve that. And why not be the bearer of our own um, accomplishments and celebrate those accolades within ourselves it, you know yeah. that I mean we're we're like like we talk about when you go to the doctor and uh, you know really making yourself empowered to ask questions because you you know the best person that knows your own body is you be the ambassador for yourself 
you know, for your thoughts, for your actions, for your celebrations. You don't need somebody else to celebrate you. You celebrate you. You did a good job this week. Despite all the outside interferences that were, you know, ticking away at your brain or gobbling up your time or distracting you, there are always blessings. You just got to sit down and say, hmm, okay, I didn't handle that so well, but oh my gosh, I did this so well. So focus on the this that you did so well. Because when you do that and you, you allow yourself that celebration of self-worth, that empowers you to continue to maybe next week you're going to get further. You know, each day is another day to push a little bit further, push a little bit harder. But we do understand sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you have things that sidetrack you. Life's not perfect. Our journeys are not perfect, but we still got to celebrate the wins because there's a lot of wins out there. People really sit down and think about it. They got more wins in their week than they realize. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, as we go forward for the weekend, you know, I, I challenge everyone to really think about this past week and what you completed, not what you didn't complete and celebrate those because that's really important. And if your to-do list have a to-do list, maybe you want to look at that again and say, you know what, maybe I'm being overly too listy because, you know, yes, true. I, I've been known to, <laughs> you know, I'm always, oh, there's an app for that. It's not, you still have to put into something what you want to get out of it. And if you're not putting that something in, sometimes that will create more stress. So look at what you accomplish in such a way where you can say, yes. And you have the ability to orchestrate some of your wins. I always say, you know, have those goals again in different directions. You got, you know, your short-term, long-term, quarterly, yearly, monthly, whatever, right? We, we have those. But also set yourself up with success with attainable goals because the attainable goals will really catapult you into tackling the harder goals or the ones that you know are going to take longer. You want to have those wins. So you don't want to have things on your to-do list that you know just by writing them down, you know, okay, this is not a weekly goal. This may be a piece to get to the bigger goal, but even breaking it down to a weekly goal. So now what have you done? You, you put a negative thought in your brain. You set yourself up with something that truly wasn't realistic for what, you, what you're doing. Um, and so, you know what? You may say, you know what? I'm going to table that one on my bigger plan. Because, you know, and I always say have a vision board you know, the, of the big things and then, and layer it. So, and as you layer it, that's where you get to check them off. But underneath all those different layerings, there's smaller activities, smaller uh, things that you will accomplish that will bring you eventually to where that bigger piece is. So you got to set yourself up for success and also allow your week knowing full well that you're going to get derailed. I mean, I don't want you to put it out in the universe. You know, we want to put out positive thoughts, but you got to have preparation. So when I, and here's a simple, a real simple way of, of thinking that mindset, right? You know, you have to pick up somebody at the airport. You know, uh, what are you doing that is proactive to make sure that's a success? And, and, and some of you might be saying, no, boss, what are you talking about? Success to go pick somebody up at the airport? Yeah. Have you checked the flight? Because they're up in the sky. Maybe they don't realize that their, their flight's running late. Number one, did they forget to message you to let you know that they took off later than expected? So do that before you jump in the car and maybe possibly sit in traffic or have to keep circling around because you don't want to wait in the, the uh, short-term parking lot. Check the flight tracker, flighttracker.com. All you got to do is put, put the name of the airline in, right? And then plan accordingly. Okay, what time am I leaving? Am I leaving at a peak traffic time? So in by doing that, 
you are then in addition to that adding extra time for a lot of people don't add extra time for you know what if there's a breakdown somebody's broken down on the highway maybe there's an accident and i'm not saying like plan hours ahead of time but you know plan that in your your trip and then you're going to realize wow i'm so glad i left 30 minutes early because i had to sit in traffic for 20 i still ended up getting there on time to pick them up or now that I know their flight's not coming in, I'm going to utilize my time to get another thing checked off on my checklist before I go to the airport because I got more time now. So it's a matter of setting ourselves up for success and that takes planning. So are you planning it out? And I'm not saying overly plan. Some people are over planners, but really allow time for the derailments, allow time for the fork in the road to change that you have to renegotiate or re-navigate. And when you do that and you accomplish it, that's a win. Yes. Now it sounds kind of silly when you think about it. Oh, I'm celebrating that, you know, I, you know, renegotiated, I was getting to the airport. Yeah. Something as simple as that is a win. It sure is because time is a precious commodity. And what if you can um, be proactive and save yourself some time uh, setting yourself up for success? That's how you set yourself up for success. There's, you know, so many different things that you can really apply to really support all those forks in the road. Yeah, so, I mean, that's so true. So true. Yeah. So what do you, so what are you celebrating this week? What would, what would be one of your, if you could name at least one small win and maybe one big win? Well, my sw small win, I really thought about it all day yesterday. Um, I felt really great, <laughs> excuse me, that I was finally able to, to work out. Like I said, didn't go gangbusters, but you know, I had that feeling of accomplishment all day long. I, it just made me feel so good. I accomplished so much, much more than I thought I would. That's a huge win. Um, I would have to say on a smaller scale, um, getting the monster out of bed. There you go. I mean, it's it, it's it's that it's that simple. Uh, my small win uh, would be that I took the time to uh, really re read a lot of ingredients, and it's timely but reread the ingredients and a lot of foods that I'm uh, incorporating into, uh, you know, intermittent fasting um, because I'm focused on more um, net, net carbs being as close to zero as possible. So obviously we know that when you have a carb and then you uh, take out the dietary fiber, you minus that out and that's going to get you to the end carb number or percentage. So I actually sat and really, uh, I do have a great app, but a lot of the foods that I'm consuming is not automatically in there. So I got to manually put them in there, really understanding more of the power of the macros and, and balancing that all out. So it almost sounds like it was a big win, um, but it, you know, it's just a matter of sitting there and saying, you know what, today's the day I'm going to do it. It may take me an hour, maybe take me a couple hours, but I got to start, especially like the favorite foods that I eat more often. I haven't had the time to take down, you know, to really get those notes and put them in to my system, meaning the application. So I did that and I thought that was great. The other big win was to, and this was a harder, a harder goal, uh, was to really increase my water intake because I've been doing it on a smaller scale. And I finally have surpassed my uh, over 50% of my body weight, which was a huge thing for me, which meant obviously. I had to be closer to a bathroom until my body was getting used to how many times I was urinating from all the water I was drinking. So that does take time. Um, so I knew that mm, my week was going to be a little bit restricted until I really got that. But I finally think I've got the groove. And uh, with doing it that way and combining those two things, the water and the macros, I really understood uh, the power of intermittent fasting and really found my my good burning fat burning time frame to work out a lot of people don't do that 
not, you know, it's, and it's really about just knowing your body, but really understanding the four phases of, of intermittent fasting. So I really found that when, when I'm in the ketosis, keto, ketone mode of where my body is, and I'm really burning the fats, um, that that's really the best time for me to like, at least get a 20 minute workout uh, because my body's already revved up at that point. So, you know, I'm pretty proud that I, I, I got all those, you know, they were all like little small little things that will lead to the bigger goal of uh, the ultimate thriver, uh, as well as the body transformation. So I was pretty excited about that. That is awesome. So now, of course, we need to come up with the question of the day before we announce the winner of the Stunod Award. Yes. So we're, well, I'm going to go with, and I think I announced it a day before, maybe it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday uh, that I would like to recommend um, Geraldo Herrera just because of his very ridiculous, I'm going to try not to say the S word, ridiculous comment regarding um, the level of what, you know, where he thought that the person occupying the White House, why he did a good job because he was more cognitive. Like that's the bar we're setting now. I thought that was such the most ridiculous statement ever. And while we do support, you know, um, people saying what they feel, um, you know, that's our God-given right to do that. We fully support that. But Geraldo, you did sound like a stew nod when you made that comment. Therefore, you are the winner of the Two Sisters Stew Nod Award. And of course, I will tag you on Twitter and you'll be able to see that. You know, it, it's done with some admiration, of course, we don't agree with you um, on what you said, but we support what you said. That's your God-given right. And that's right. That's free, that. speech. free speech, baby. Free so speech. yeah, with free speech comes things that are going to piss you off. With free, free speech, you're going to hear a lot of people say some dumb things. But the bottom line is that's what our country is all about, freedom to speak your mind. Uh, and I always say, you know, try to at least do it with kindness. So I, I want to give Geraldo some credit. He did, he did say, uh, you know, with with you know with kindness, but he was he was giggling. So I'm not really sure. He, after he said it, that he realized, ooh, that was really kind of a low bar to set. Like that's an obvious bar that the, the leader of the free world should be cognitive, right? Like they should know what's going on. I'm wondering if after, after he said that, if he has any regrets for saying that. Well, oh, did I really? You say know, that? I, I, you know what, and rightfully so. But you know what, that's the whole point that we talk about. We, we do, and we do it. I mean, who doesn't put their foot in their mouth or say something that, after the fact, you realize, oh, that was really dumb. Why, why, why would I even think that? Well, we're human. We're not perfect. So. I'm going to let him off on the hook because it wasn't, a, I don't think it was, obviously it wasn't a vicious thing you said. It was just right. kind of like you set the bar really low for what the expectations. Like it's right. obvious. It's obvious. And if it's not obvious to you, that's a problem. But it's obvious that the person, the free, uh, the leader of the free world, and I say that loosely, uh, should be cognitive. Like, of course they should be. Right, you are. And the question of the day. Oh, I picked out the last one. This one's on you, girlfriend. Okay. The question of the day. What are you, what appetizer are you making for the Super Bowl? Oh, that's a great one. I for totally forgot about the Super Bowl because obviously, Neither team I'm overly impressed. Well, I shouldn't say I'm not overly impressed. I do like Mahomes. Um, I am going to say that I'll be cheering on the Eagles, even though I, I hope they have a good game. Mahomes, Mahomes is, is uh, very tough, and I like him. He really, he just has a spark about him, so I really, really like him. 
And the reasons all the people said, well, then why are you, if you like him so, why are you cheering on the Eagles? I'm cheering on the Eagles because our grandson loves the Eagles. He was an Eagle when he was doing flag football. So he resonates with the Eagles. So I'm going with the grandson. He said he wants the Eagles. I don't think they're going to win, but I'm just saying that. <laughs> well, you know, of course, I'm getting a lot of reports from Ryan Scott. Um, he says Philly is just, you know, the excitement is on. He says sometimes you can just open up your window and, and you hear the roar of the crowd. Like, it, and of course, there's a lot. He said, Mom, there's a lot. They're still greasing all the poles. Yeah, you know. And for those that don't understand why, and they're not the only community that, that does do that. Um, when you have, you know, a uh, sports, you know, arena such as, you know, the, the Super Bowl, you know, any big championship, uh, some citizens of that particular city of one of the teams that's, you know, playing, uh, if they're the winner, sometimes things get a little kooky and out of hand. And the reason why you grease the pole is so they can't climb on it. Because a lot of times you'll see, uh, and I, I still remember it was in Boston, one of the Super Bowl victory par parades. And I've been to three of them. And there were some people, and some, some, some of the poles have more give than others. So a lot of you know cities have gotten smart and they grease them. So if somebody's trying to climb up on them, they're going to get goopy, gross. <laughs> And they're not going to go very far. That is true. And, you know, uh, I just say kudos to um, those cities and their crews that have to do all that. And, of course, we'll be doing the cleanup. And on that note, we hope that you have an amazing weekend. Celebrate those wins because this is Fantabulous Friday. Set yourself up for success. It's, <laughs> it's going to be an amazing weekend. My name is Janice, aka Wellness Diva 5.0. I've got to go wake that monster up. And I am with two sisters. And this is Carol Sue, aka Naughty Boss, wishing everyone a very, very great weekend. Remember, be the ambassador of yourself. Celebrate you, have that conversation, but also uh, continue to pay for the kindness and show gratitude to others. You know, we, we push out good feelings, good vibes, good thoughts. Remember, let's try to change that 80% of negative. Let's get some positivity in there, right? And a lot of times, it's just a matter of you having a conversation with yourself. Take care. We will see you Monday for Monday Mindset. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye for now.